Good evening, and I'd like to call to order our Tuesday, April 17th, 2018 City Commission meeting. Um, let us stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have our roll call, please? Commissioner Lee? Here. Mayor Hines? Here. Commissioner Martin? Here. Commissioner Vogt? Here. And Commissioner Short, who I guess is not here? Left for an emergency, yes. I move we excuse Commissioner Short from the meeting tonight. Second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, Commissioner Short has been excused. And now we move to announcements. Do we have any announcements? I know we have a presentation coming, but do we have any announcements before that? If not, we will move to our presentation, the Friends of the Piqua Parks. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Ruth Kuhn, and I am here tonight. We thank you for allowing us to do this presentation this evening. I am chairman of Friends of the Piqua Parks, and I'm also the person who has formed a task force committee to study the possibility of reno renovating the slopes on Route 36 between the overpass, the railroad overpass, and the entrance to the mall and speedway. Uh, this project will positively impact the image for Piqua because it's such a major gateway to our city. The task force committee consisted of Don Smith, Mark Casto, Bob Grazer with the city of Piqua, and myself. We met for over a year to discuss some options to improve and beautify this area. It's a very visible green space. One option was to reduce the height of the slopes, but we decided, came to the conclusion that was almost cost prohibitive because of moving electric at the top of one of the slopes on the south side. Then we also discussed the option of adding a retaining stone wall, uh, extensive hardscape additions, but we also came to that conclusion, way, way too expensive. So wonderful Mark Casto has come up with a plan. It's a conceptual plan that we think will be very pleasing and also very affordable. Uh, as you all know, Mark is a familiar professional known to many of us uh, for beautiful landscape projects in and around Piqua for over 35 years. Ed Mark will be the volunteer project coordinator for this plan. We then met with Friends of the Pickle Parks. That committee consisted of Edna Stiffel, Russ Fashner, Glenn Devers, Don Smith, Sydney Lillycrap, Jim Vetter, and Commissioner Bill Vogt, and asked them to join forces with us for this important project. They were agreeable to do so, and we're here tonight to, and they are here tonight to support this plan. They are in the audience behind me. The Friends of the Pickle Parks was organized in 2014 for the purpose of establishing a community support association for the benefit of the public park system located within the city of Piqua. Their mission has been expanded, however, to include this beautification project. I want to tell you a little bit about the successes of the Friends of the Piqua Parks. We successfully completed improving the entrance to Pitts and Barker Sports Complex, as well as raising the funds to erect a life-size bronze statue of William H. Pitzenbarger, Piqua's Medal of Honor recipient. As a sidebar comment, I will also tell you that we are working on what's called a QR for the statue. It will be a little implant in the statue. You will have an app on your mobile device, your phone, and you can go up to the statue and connect to it, and it will take you to a website that Edison College has helped us create. There's an audio part of it, and Glenn Devers has is reading the text. It'll tell you all about William Pitzenbarger and what he has done for our community and for our country. So in the, one of the most recent uh, uh, completed or we're in the um, completing efforts to update the improved Doss Park. The Friends of the Pickle Parks is also a 501c3, which will enable donors to uh, contribute to this upcoming project. We met with the city manager twice and discussed our plans and that we need and what we need from the city to move forward and he has been extremely helpful um, now I want to turn the presentation over to a very nervous Mark Casto 
So everybody, please smile because nothing to be nervous about, Mark. He'll do the presentation. I brought this one. If you can see it, your eyes are better than mine, but I'll hang on to it. <clears throat> the concept for this landscaping plan is to create a beautiful uh, plant-lined and tree-lined uh, vista as one drives in and out of Piqua, uh, and also to accentuate the, the linear uh, uh, the linear and the encompassing nature of that site on Ash Street. That being located between the CSX Railroad Trestle and uh, Scott Street and Center Court. <clears throat> the plant genuses uh, have been chosen uh, for their rigorous growth, their reported resistance to disease and insect, their color in the plant and in the bloom that they produce, uh, their texture and for their performance in hillside planting, which is considerably more stressful for plants than a, than a, than a flat planting. I'll, I'll hold this up. I don't know if, can you see this? We, we've um, got it on the screen. Mm -hmm. so. What we have done, what I've done is I've taken the two opposing uh, hills and use them in concert with each other to create a larger landscape area. We have landscape beds that drop down through the lawn area and we use groupings of different plants. We've used medium to large shade trees to create that tree line effect. At the um, east end, we put four crabs in and at the west end, we have put a grouping of spruce trees uh, uh, to actually help enhance the newly painted bridge. <clears throat> In any landscape plan, uh, there are certain requirements parameters that have to be met. Um, <clears throat> uh, those being that the landscape needs to look good the whole year through, that it has to be as maintenance uh, effective as possible, and that the plants actually perform well in this in this setting. Our committee believes that our plant choices and design will, re will uh, satisfy these requirements. Our committee also believes that this concept will enhance and beautify, you know, our great city of Piqua, and I, and I do believe that. And we are asking, you know, for your support and your blessing to continue through with this project. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Good job. So I just want to conclude the presentation. So our first step is going to be to engage a landscape architect to prepare the work working drawings and spec specifications we need. And this document will allow Bob Grazer to uh, have ODOT review the project and will get their approval. Then we're going to begin our fundraising efforts immediately and that will be sending out informational bro brochures to our residents, applying to local and state foundations and visiting our local service clubs and informing them of this project. We'll develop a maintenance plan in partnership with the City of Bicma in the near future. We are a group of citizens who are very interested in making our community the best it can be and including making it very beautiful and impressive. So we're here tonight for your support for this beautification project, which as said at the beginning of my remarks, will positively impact the image of Piqua by improving a major gateway to our community. Thank you so much for allowing us again to be here this evening. Can I ask you just a quick question? Because I know we had a conversation many months ago when you guys were in the process of mm -hmm. doing this, and it was hard for me to tell on the plan. Is Are there flagpoles? I know we had talked about flagpoles in the, there are flagpoles in it. I couldn't, I couldn't tell in the plan where well, they were. Well, as you see um, on your screen, you see the four little, what are they, Mark? They're crabs? They're, the yeah. crab apples? Okay. Yeah. That area, uh, when we talk to the city manager, Gary, that area will have a, so the one of the wayfinding signs, I think, and then that's where we're going to put the flag poles. <coughs> and we'll get the, a large one of the American flag, the state flag, and our community and our flag will be there. Okay. And then there'll probably will be maybe some plantings around that. So it'll be lovely. 
and we hope to have that lit then also. Well, and if it's right by the welcome to Piquas, the city sign, it will be, I, I would think that that's going to be lit as well. So that yes. would be the perfect location. Okay, I just couldn't see those on there, and I knew we had talked about that quite a few months ago. So. You know, the interesting thing about this, and Mark mentioned this, you see what he said, the evergreens there on each side of where the new overpasses. When you go by there now, when you look at it, those, those whatever they are, they're all straggly and you can just imagine when they're all gone and this beautiful group of evergreens and then our wonderful painted uh, overpass, it'll just be a great mm -hmm. entrance for our community. Because then as you come into the community, then you see Ash Street that's been completely redone. So yeah. it's a continuation of making our gateway, our image so wonderful and beautiful. And I have met with the group, as Ruth indicates, and uh, I think they're addressing all the issues like maintenance and uh, things of that nature, using perennial plants and, and so forth. So um, I personally am very supportive of it, and you know I think it's uh, wonderful that the community comes forward to do these type <coughs> projects to help us. So. I like the idea, but how often would you have to clean up? I know the plants are perennials, but how often for maintenance, I mean, how would you have to go cut the grass and how often? Ideally, you would do it every day, but that's not realistic. Uh, and we are actually we are actually working on plans sure. to put forth, you know, an acceptable maintenance schedule for it. I, okay. I can tell you that, but the details we do not. Sure, and, that's fine. And, and just so you know, we, we are going to continue to mow it because of sure. the slope and so forth, it's safer for us to do it. You know, Commissioner, that's a great question, though, because if you notice where the serpentine mm -hmm. uh, planting areas are, that has decreased now that high pitch of where the mower has to go. Mm -hmm. So the that's mower awesome. doesn't have to go as high anymore. I think it's going to look great. Thank you. Ruth, how many months have you guys been working on this? Over a year. Over a year. And I just want to commend you all because I know this has been a dream and you have been working very hard. You've been meeting and doing that. And, you know, if all of our citizens got together and did things like this to better our city, we would be amazing. I mean, it would be amazing where we would be. So thank you for your time and your effort and your vision. So um, thank you. Yeah, I think it's wonderful. Appreciate it. And yeah. thank you for everybody for smiling because I think Mark feels much better now. Mark's a good guy. Anybody else on the commissioner? Any comments? Okay. All right. Thank you. I think tonight, if <coughs> I think if the commission just wants to give a head nod, we all okay. if everyone's agree, we'll continue to proceed. If okay, I'm fine with it. I'm liking it. Okay. All right. I think you have our blessing. So Thank great. You. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. All right. And now we move to our regular city commission meeting. The first thing on our docket is our consent agenda. There are six items on the uh, consent agenda tonight. The first is the approval of the minutes from the April 3rd, 2018 regular city commission meeting. Number two is a resolution authorizing preliminary consent to the Ohio Department of Transportation for bridge deck ceiling on bridges that are in District 7. And just for your information, that uh, related to PICWA, there's four um, over Patrizio Place, over Garbury Road, over the railroad and southbound I-75 uh, entrance ramp and over uh, County Road 25A North. So those are the, the uh, applications in our case. Item number three is a resolution authorizing a lease agreement to permit the use of a portion of Fountain Park by the Miami Valley Corvette Club for a car show. Number four is a resolution authorizing a lease agreement to permit the use of a portion of Lot 9 Park and Linear Park to the Piqua Arts Council for the Rock Piqua Concerts. Number five is a resolution authorizing a lease agreement to permit the usage of a portion of Lot 9 Park and Linear, Linear Park to Main Street Piqua for the Down the River, Down the Beer event. And number six is a resolution authorizing a lease agreement to permit the use of a portion of Fountain Park by Main Street Piqua for Ohio Chautauqua. Hey. We have heard our consent agenda. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the consent agenda passes. And now we move to old business. The first is ordinance number 5-18, and it was tabled. Um, and so we will have to remove it from the table, but we can go ahead and read that. 
An emergency ordinance renumbering Chapter 55, Stormwater Management of the Piqua Municipal Code. I move we take this off the table. Second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it's off the table and it's, uh, it's back on the table. It's, it's back here for a vote, so. Um, Ms. Wall will have the staff reports on the first three items. Thank you. Uh, we tabled this at the last meeting because we needed to make sure it uh, worked in conjunction with the next two ordinances. This is the renumbering of Chapter 55, the Stormwater Management Code. It only is a renumbering. It doesn't change any of the content or substance of that chapter. The basis of the renumbering is to put it um, in order with the right-of-way ordinances uh, that are already in place and the ones you're about to adopt or to consider. I would ask for this to be passed as an emergency and waive the three reading rule as uh, we are under a time constraint for the next two ordinances. So in order for those to be passed, we need this renumbered as well. Okay. Any questions or comments <coughs> from the commission on this ordinance? Is it needing passed enough of a thing to make it so it's an emergency ordinance? I mean, I don't see how it affects the health, welfare, and everything else for the citizens of Piqua. We can't, right now it would be, you'd have your code not numbered correctly because the next chapter, uh, ordinance number 7-18 that you're about to consider is a brand new chapter and it would be numbered chapter 55. So if you don't pass this, the benefit to the citizens or the harm to the citizens as there's no clear way to enforce the code when you have two chapters that are numbered 55. Okay. So why not take 7-18 and move it back two meetings and we have three readings on this and then we start on 7-18 after that? Because 7-18 needs passed tonight as well and I'll get into that, but the state legislation requires it to be passed 90 days before its effective date, which is scheduled for July. So if we don't pass it tonight on three readings, we jeopardize missing that date. And that would affect us how? And, oh, go ahead. It would, so what happened with the legislation is that the House has passed it in conjunction with um, all of the governmental entities being represented and meeting with the industry to come up with a um, statute that everyone can live with. Part of that statute, um, the House has passed it, the Senate has now passed it, all it's waiting is the governor's signature, which would make it effective <coughs> probably in July. Part of that statute requires that you have a requirement that any small cell structure coming in would be underground. So we wouldn't have ugly boxes or poles or anything above ground in areas designated by the city where it has to be underground. If it's not designated 90 days before that effective date, we cannot require it. So you would risk having these structures located above ground by not passing this tonight. Okay. All right. <coughs> and I would say that this is something that um, we have been really working on to get this legislation um, at the state. So it's important for um, to keep those things under the ground and not have those cell towers pop up on any corner. I think this was the legislation that 150 cities yeah. jointly sued the state about. So to get this. And we were one of the cities. Uh, yeah. <coughs> Okay, um, so we have rem we are still looking at ordinance number 5-18. Um, do we have anyone to speak of it? Um, anybody else from the commission that has any questions? I'd like to make this an emergency. Okay. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor of, oh, we need, we need, oh, we need, a, oh, we need to waive the three reading. We I recommend we waive the three Thank reading. Thank you. Second. Okay. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The three reading rule has um, been waived. And now the ordinance is before us. Moved to adopt ordinance 5-18. Second. Second. Okay. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 
Okay, the ordinance passes. <coughs> and now we move to ordinance number 7-18. And this is a first reading, an emergency ordinance adopting and implementing chapter 55, small cell facilities and wireless support structures of the Piqua Municipal Code. So you will see um, that this says chapter 55, the last ordinance you just adopted. That's why it was renumbered because we already have a chapter 55. Chapter 54 in the PICWA code is a right of way ordinance. So this, by making this chapter 55 a brand new chapter, we then put it in line. You have right of way first, then you have your small cells which are going in your right of way. So we are putting it in logical order. This legislation, as indicated, has been um, passed by the House, passed by the Senate as amended and ready for the governor's signature. It was a, an initiation after all of the litigation that took place from House Bill 331 uh, to sit down with the parties to see what legislation they could create that everyone could live with. Um, that was accomplished. And it really was at the urging of the courts indicating that there needed to be a partnership on this. So if you recall at the last meeting, we tabled this one as well because we weren't quite ready. We did make some minor tweaks. That's why it's a new number tonight and not coming off the table. At that last meeting, there was a member in the audience um, representing one of the cellular companies. Uh, the city staff has met with him to just hear his concerns, ask questions about the ordinance. We have reviewed it since then to reflect anything he brought up, um, double check ourselves. And so we are asking for, again, this to be passed by an emergency, waive the three reading rule. That basis being we want this in effect before any company starts applying for the legislation and we don't have it in place and then the governor would make that effective um, what is now thought of to be sometime in July. Okay. Okay, I have a question. Is House Bill 478 now acceptable to everybody? Yes, so House Bill 478, I believe, um, was the result of House Bill 331 being challenged in litigation. So all the cell phone companies and the cities and the governments did not agree on House Bill 331. All of the cities challenged that based upon home rule law saying it violated um, our ability to re uh, regulate as well as there was a constitutional issue with the um, House Bill itself. The court agreed with those arguments and so as a result the industry, the cellular industry, and then representatives from the governmental entities met to come up with legislation. Uh, the House passed it. They sent it to the Senate. The Senate made some tweaks to it um, and sent it back. And as far as we know, right now, everyone is agreed. It is approved. It has been passed and just waiting governor's signature. Um, there's no indication that uh, there's litigation coming out of this. Okay. I move we waive the three reading rule. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded to waive the three reading rule. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Do we have any more discussion about this from the commission? Do we have anybody in the audience that has anything on this ordinance? I move to adopt ordinance number 7 18. Second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the ordinance passes. And now we move to ordinance number 8-18. This is the first reading. An emergency ordinance amending chapter 92, streets and sidewalks of the Piqua Municipal Code. This ordinance uh, we are also asking to be adopted tonight. We have the three reading rule. This is an existing chapter in our code 92, which governs our streets and sidewalks. Uh, we are adding a definition section under 92.19 and then amending 92.20. This legislation comes out of what we just passed. Uh, that <coughs> statute required that the city create its territory, its areas where undergrounding would be required. If it's not indicated in our planning documents, then we would not be able to enforce it. 
So 92.20 already included some areas. After this legislation came out, we've had an opportunity to go back and look at that, expand the area where it needed to be expanded and add areas. So now it's just not your downtown area, um, but a historic district. And then we've listed um, subdivisions as well. Uh, where undergrounding has already taken place, but we wanna make sure any future development is also underground. If we don't pass this tonight, we will not be able to enforce it because of that 90 day rule. This, this ordinance actually is the crux of the 90 day issue. This is what's triggering everything else. And if I'm correct, Stacy, we added all these subdivisions and different things like that into the ordinance in order to right so originally there were um, eight sections listed for undergrounding those sections have been expanded and then uh, we've added different sections in the city as well as the subdivisions and again part of that was looking at the comprehensive plan what we're already doing in the city and in areas where we already have undergrounding we need to make sure we continue that this um, applies to the city as well. So in <coughs> our development in those areas, we need to be making sure we're going um, underground too. Does this make sure to catch everything that, we, that could possibly happen? Whether it be, um, I don't know what, cable company or somebody comes out with a new the latest and greatest thing, will we still be able to control that also? Yeah, so part of the discussion we actually had with one of the companies was that company, which is a very large company, didn't see any issue with this because a couple years ago it may have been an issue due to expense, but technology is evolving so quickly they don't see any issues whatsoever because everything's so small or already going underground that they had no objection whatsoever. Okay. I move we waive the three reading rule on ordinance number 8-18. Second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, It the three reading rule has been um, waived. And now do we have any discussion on the ordinance? Anything else? I move we adopt number. Let me ask for public comment just okay. in case we, is there anybody that has any public okay, comment public. on this ordinance? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now Bill. I move we adopt. Uh, Ordinance number 8-18. Second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the ordinance passes. And now we move to resolution number R-57-18. A resolution requesting final legislation to enter into an agreement with the Ohio Department of Transportation for the Garbury Road, Looney Road intersection improvements project in the city of Piqua. Ms. Havener will provide the staff report. Thank you. In 2015, um, we brought before the City Commission the legislation to enter into an agreement with ODOT to program this project. Since then, we have completed the design and the right-of-way acquisition, so we're now at a point where the project is out to bid. Bids are due in May 17th, and ODOT is requesting that we put our local percentage, which is approximately 25% of the project, in escrow. So when the bids come in, they can go ahead and award the project, and we can get started on construction. Um, the city's cost right now is estimated to be about $288,365. That is about 25% of the total construction cost. However, I am asking for an, a 10% additional um, because bids are not in. So if bids do come in high, I do not have to come back for that 10%. However, if they come in lower than the estimate, then we will receive that money back into our funds. Any questions or comments from the commission on this resolution? What would happen if this comes in at crazy high and the city of Pickle would be on the hook for a million dollars? ODOT what, at what that point um, would not allow the bids to go through. They do have a cap as well. and They would have to go through and reevaluate the design, look at the contracts. So um, they do have a requirement too to prevent that from happening. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anything else from the commission? Do we have any comments um, from the public on this resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. I move we adopt resolution R-57-18. 
Second. Has been moved and seconded. Let's have a roll call, please. Commissioner Vote. Aye. Commissioner Martin. Aye. Mayor Hines. Aye. Commissioner Lee. Aye. Okay, the resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-58-18. <clears throat> a resolution awarding a contract for the purchase of decorative streetlights for the Looney and Garbury roundabout. Mr. Krieger will provide the staff reports for the next five items. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, the next five items actually were all uh, unanimously recommended for city commission approval at the uh, <coughs> March uh, Pickle Energy Board meeting. The first two items that I uh, bring before you are related to the item th uh, that uh, Amy just discussed, the roundabout project. Uh, the first item is for the decorative street lighting associated with the roundabout. Uh, the power system is responsible for the purchase and installation and, and uh, maintenance of the street lights for the city of Piqua. And we have adopted um, standards for our decorative lighting. And the eight lights that are to be installed at the roundabout are uh, similar to the lights that are installed on 36 along the area that uh, Ruth had uh, discussed a little bit ago there, the uh, teardrop type uh, large black uh, fluted street lights. So uh, this first item I asked for approval to move forward with the purchase of the lights. We received eight competitive bids in all phase uh, electric provided the lowest bid. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission on this resolution? Any questions or comments from the public on this resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. I'll move we adopt uh, resolution R58-18. Second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-59-18. A resolution awarding a contract for conduit work for the relocation of power and communication lines for the Looney and Garbury roundabout. Thank you. As I mentioned, this is the second item that relates to the roundabout project. Uh, there's quite a bit of utility relocation that needs to be done in the area. And uh, due to the design, it's uh, basically undergrounding the electric and the communication facilities working jointly with AT&T and, and Spectrum, previously Time Warner. Uh, we actually were initially considering taking the lead on this project and doing a joint uh, use trench. We received bids. Uh, the bids came back well above engineer's estimate. Our share of the project alone was going to be in excess of $90,000 just for the conduits that are required to relocate our facilities due to the roundabout. So we regrouped and uh, we basically, uh, at uh, Spectrum's uh, recommendation, they have contracts in place for directional boring um, and uh, the boring technology has really moved forward over the last several years. It's a really cost effective approach uh, for installing conduits. You don't have restoration work required with it. And uh, as we ran the numbers for that using one of their contractors, uh, we were able to cut our projected uh, cost for the utility conduit relocation work to about a third of that. So uh, this approach allows us to use our joint use agreements with uh, Spectrum. They're taking the lead on the project. We're providing uh, uh, basically the conduit for the project and um, hopefully get the conduits uh, relocated and installed and allow us to get in and do our work and AT&T and Spectrum to do their work so the uh, construction on the roundabout can begin. Thank you. All right, any questions or comments from the commission on this resolution? Yeah, I have a question on section two. At the end it says not exceeding a total of 40,200. And back in the um, background, it says the uh, energy board approved installation up to a cost of 100,000. Right. So wouldn't that need to say 100,000 if, if it possibly went that high? Yeah, and, and if you recall, that was your recommendation at the energy board meeting because yeah. we didn't have bids yet for the directional boring. And uh, we knew it was going to be above, we felt like it would be above 25,000 and, and need city commission approval, but uh, we weren't really sure what the cap was going to be on it. Certainly we were hopeful it would be below the 90,000 that would have cost for open trench. And once we receive the bids in, the estimates are in the low 30s. So we've added contingency to that estimate. And I feel really comfortable that we're able to get our work done at that price. Okay, I just wanted to check. Yeah, thanks. Okay. All 
All right. Any other questions? Any questions from the public on this resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the ordinance. Second. second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor of re resolution number R-59-18, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-60-18. A resolution awarding contract for maintenance of PICWA's number nine gas turbine. Okay, this item uh, relates to planned maintenance activities on one of our, the city's two large gas turbines. Uh, as you're aware, we've seen like we've uh, been to commission a number of times over the last few years as we've made improvements to these units. Uh, they're very um, important part of the city's power supply um, portfolio. Um, by having these units, we were able to save in excess of a million dollars uh, in this past 12 months, uh, $2 million of our customers' electric bills. So uh, we were able to do that by using these units to peak shave on the hottest days of the year. And we're preparing ourselves for this summer's peak period. And uh, one of the items that we came to commission earlier this year was for replacement diesel starting engine on the number nine gas turbine. Uh, that that uh, diesel engine's on order and due to be delivered here in a few weeks. In addition, uh, we have repairs on a torque converter that's um, taking place right now as well. And uh, those two items will have to be reinstalled on the unit before peak season starts. And um, actually, we had a, a situation in January as we were running the units where we were having some difficulties and found that uh, we had some combustion components that Salzer had redone for us a few years ago and uh, it actually works to our advantage that, that equipment is still under warranty and so they're due to be on site in May to to make those repairs and install the the rebuilt uh, components and because of that we're able to use Salzer to do the diesel engine and torque converter install at the same time that way we won't have to pay for a mobiliza mobilization and demobilization and we would just be paying uh, Salzer uh, under their uh, time and material sheets uh, that they have in place for this year. And so it's a very cost-effective cost way of getting the work done. Salzer's workforce in the past, they've done the lion's uh, share of the work on our gas turbines over the year, over the years. They, their offices are in Houston. They have uh, very skilled personnel. There, there aren't a lot of companies that can work on these uh, vintage gas turbines. These units are, were built in the 60s and 70s. And, and we, f we feel very confident that they'll do a good job. They've done a good job for us in the past. So we actually budgeted $100,000 for this work and uh, we're only asking for a little bit uh, more than half that amount uh, due to the, some of the cost effectiveness we're gonna get by them uh, mobilizing on their dime since it's uh, warranty work. Great. So this work is scheduled to be completed by June 1st. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission on this resolution? Any questions or comments from our public on this resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. I move we adopt resolution R-60-18. Second. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-61-18. A resolution awarding a contract for roof repairs to Piqua's power plant. Over the uh, past uh, five years, we've been uh, making repairs to the, to the city's power plant. At one time, we had, uh, when we built our new facility in 2012, we had considered uh, re uh, demo demolishing the plant and removing it. And uh, and a, uh, a little bit after that, we were able to secure a grant for the waterfront redevelopment project. and. And during that work, we found, you know, the building was really in, in quite excellent shape with except, exception of the roof. And uh, we, we still have quite a bit of asbestos in the building, so it's important that we get the building in a, a watertight condition. So we've been working kind of on a uh, section by section piece, starting with the oldest part of the roof, which is on the uh, north end, working to the south. Uh, this contract with uh, WRI, who's done the last uh, four years worth of work, actually completes the work on the plan. It makes the plant watertight. And uh, we've got some future plans that hopefully materialize in the next five to 10 years where we, we may possibly bring some more generation back to the city within, the, within that building itself. So um, this is a, a kind of a key project in terms of, of uh, restoration of the facility 
and uh, and allow us to move forward some future development in the future when the time's right. Right. Okay. Any questions or comments from the commission on this resolution? Yeah, I don't remember us talking about this at Energy Board, but how well does this handle being walked on after it's been applied? Yeah, it's the strength is pretty amazing. Um, I think one of the things we talked about at the board meeting was originally the north end of the plant, the oldest end of the plant, a section of roof that uh, had deteriorated so badly. I mean, it was built in the uh, um, back in the uh, 20s, and uh, you couldn't walk on it. You risk falling through the roof. And, and with this foam type system that's described in the in the literature that's in the uh, um, commission packets they're able to with just a few inches of this foam develop an amazing amount of strength and they basically say you can drive a truck over top of it when you're completed so where that section was in the old part of the roof they basically were able to put plywood down apply the foam over top of it and I forget the the ratio on on the amount of uh, strength you gain per inch of the foam but yeah, you, you, you can you're free to walk on it there's a protective coating that goes on top after the foam goes on and uh, it's got a uh, I believe it's 20 year warning to it it's quite some time all right thank you anything else from the Commission any questions or comments from the public on this resolution not I will entertain a motion move to adopt resolution 61-18 second has been moved and seconded all those in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed okay the resolution passes and now we move to resolution number R-62-18. A resolution awarding a contract for the purchase of high voltage breakers for the power system. So this is the final item that was recommended for commission approval at our last energy board meeting. Uh, you may recall uh, came to commission to get approval for an engineering contract with SSOE to help us evaluate options and alternatives for replacement of the city's high voltage breakers. The, the high voltage breakers are basically the device that controls the flow of power in and out of the city. So at our, our three main substations, we have these 69,000 volt, volt. Right now, they're oil-filled equipment. Oil is used to extinguish the arc when you open and close the breaker. They're 1970s uh, uh, vintage equipment, uh, so they're 40 to 50 years old. 40 to 50 years old, depending on which substation that you're in, and they're really one of the most critical devices we have on our system. Um, we had an issue back when we had the day ratio windstorm come through in 2012 where we lost all the feeds into the city and uh, we actually had one good source if we were able to close back in we could have maintained uh, the flow of power into the city and, and avoid a three hour power outage so um, we identified these uh, breakers as a, as a key reliability improvement project working with power solutions who does all the city's substation maintenance and uh, we found that really we're one of the few utilities, municipal utilities that still maintain this older technology. The newer technology that's replaced the, old, old, the older oil equipment is used as SF6 gas or vacuum to extinguish the arc. And uh, so we solicited bids. We received bids and uh, um, we, we received bids from four SF6 manufacturers. They're all large, large companies, uh, GE, uh, Siemens, ABB, Mitsubishi, and then we also received a bid from Hitachi to provide a vacuum breaker technology where you, you don't have to deal with the environmental issues with SF6 gas. And uh, we knew that we would receive bids for the, from the two opposing technologies, um, SF6 being cheaper, but uh, vacuum has some uh, distinct advantages. But the one thing we, we found when we received our bids is all four of the SF6 breaker manufacturers uh, reject the city's terms and conditions and weren't willing to negotiate terms and conditions whereas Hitachi even though they offer they offer a superior product it more, more more expensive but they offered a two-year uh, additional warning on top and uh, we're uh, willing to work with us on our terms and conditions and Stacy's already reviewed them and doesn't have any concerns with them so what we want to do is replace the 12 high voltage breakers that the, we have in our three different substations over a three year period. We would start this year with our substation number five on 25A uh, with the first three breakers. Okay, any questions or comments from the commission on this? Any questions or comments from our public on this? 
not, I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion for the resolution. Okay. We have a second. 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 We have a motion and a second for resolution number R-62-18. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-63-18. A resolution to continue participation in a multi-jurisdictional hazard mitigation plan in conjunction with the Miami County Emergency Management Agency. Ms. Hagner. Thank you. Um, the city has been working with the Miami County EMA for the past few years on the update to the hazard mitigation plan. The last plan was brought before you in 2011 for a 2012 adoption. Every five years, the Miami County EMA is required to update that plan. Um, the city of Piqua is a participant along with all the other cities in Miami County, along with the townships and um, some of the villages, as well as the Miami Conservancy District. And the goal of this plan, it's, it's twofold. It's to put projects in the plan that will help um, reduce long-term um, loss of property, life eventually, um, and it, it basically protects us from hazards should something happen in Piqua. Um, but also if we're in this plan and there is a natural disaster of some sort, then it makes us eligible for grant funding to be able to um, make the repairs needed. So for instance, we have in there the continued maintenance of all of our class one dams. So if grant money does become available, um, the Miami County EMA or any of the other communities, if they become aware of it, we're all working together in partnership that the city of Piqua then would have access to that grant funds. So um, it's a great tool. We hope we never have to use anything in there, but if um, a natural disaster should happen, then this is just making us that much closer to being prepared. Okay, thank you. Any questions or comments from the commission on this resolution? Any questions or comments from our public on this resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. I move we adopt resolution R-63-18. Second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-64-18. A resolution to rescind a protective covenant restricting the retail use of Peters Subdivision Section 3 in Lots 5873. Mr. Smeezing will have the final three staff reports on the agenda item tonight. All right. Uh, this item, uh, if approved, will clear the way to hopefully put a, uh, an idle retail property back into a productive use. Uh, the property being referred to here is the retail strip that's just north of the Ohio to Indiana Trail, the bike path uh, along Sunset Drive on the east side of the street. Uh, it is part of the Peters subdivision section that's referenced in the ordinance, or the resolution, excuse me. And uh, the reason it's being brought to us is that there's interest in the property uh, by a prospective buyer. Uh, however, they've uh, discovered that there's a, a peculiarity with uh, the restrictive covenant that's included with the subdivision plat, and that is that it limits the retail use activity of the structure. Um, for those of us that have been in the community for any time, we're, we're, you recognize that that uh, limitation has not actively been enforced, uh, or is it uh, acknowledged by most uh, it's a it's an oddity in that it is a restrictive covenant in a subdivision plat uh, that granted the city uh, the authorization to enforce restrict the restrictive covenant we're not typically in the business of enforcing restrictive covenants we rely on the underlying zoning designation of a property and that's how we determine what uses are permissible and appropriate for for a property in this case this location is zone b general business so uh, any of those type of items that would ordinarily be permitted in the general uh, business zoning district are what we would uh, deem appropriate and issue permits for uh, at this location. So by approving this item, uh, we'll be removing the peculiar peculiarity from the subdivision plat and um, honoring the request from the applicant to remove this obstacle to his being able to potentially redevelop the property. Uh, the item's been presented to the Planning Commission for their consideration. Uh, they held a public hearing at which no one was present to speak against the item. Uh, two individuals, including one, include, one being the applicant, one being a resident from the subdivision, were present to speak in favor of the request. 
And you'll note in your packet there is a uh, petition document that the applicant circulated uh, to all the individual property owners within this um, subdivision section to acknowledge or ask them to acknowledge their support of this request. Um, so having that information and considering the testimony presented, the Planning Commission has requested that the City Commission approve this uh, request to the applicant. Thank you. You, you know, that, that's all in good. I think it needs it. What I find disturbing about this piece of legislation is we get a whole bunch of numbers. We didn't get a picture of where it's at or a street address. I had to drive over there and, that, and I assumed that is where the old medical center used to be. Am I correct? It's the property just south of the former Sunset Medical Center, yes. Okay. Now, it would have been much more advantageous to us if we would have had a map and a street address that we could get that in our mind to uh, make a decision on, yes, should we approve this or shouldn't we approve it? Uh, I am putting all the confidence in our planning commission. Yes, it should be done, but it would be much easier for us to have a picture of this when we are going to vote on something. And that's, that's all I have to say about it. Any other yeah, comments? I have the same concerns as Commissioner Vote that we get these before us and until I got here and talked to, I can't remember who, I had no idea where the Peter subdivision is. Mm -hmm. Okay, on my opinion, that should never happen. That information should be in our packet so that we can make a good decision that we have been able to research as much as possible. So I'd just like to see that information always be in there if we're going to vote on something that is information like that. Because I have no idea where in lot 5873 is. Okay. Oh, by the way, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, that, that's fine, but <laughs> just the lack of information as my issue. Well, I, I, I do know that the um, docket comes out on Friday. Is that correct? It's in our Anywhere mailboxes. Probably most likely Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday Friday. Friday, yeah. So typically we can pick it up and if there is a question, I mean, I, I, it would be helpful to have the address, but at the same time we could talk with the city manager and try to figure out where that was too. So, um, but I think it's been noted that the next time we get something like that, we will have that in here so any other questions or comments from the Commission you have any any comments from the public on this I'm Tom Baker and I represent ATM investments that were purchased or want to purchase that building so I didn't know if anybody had any questions that I could answer can we ask what you're going to do with it, or is that hush hush still? Um, we don't know completely what we're doing. We've, I mean, as far as what <laughs> the plans are, I'm not sure we know what we're doing. <laughs> but we've all we've purchased the uh, Rick James building, and we did that. Mm -hmm. Okay. The one up on High Street next to Pickle Manor, we purchased that and redid that. So it's just a continuation of, of taking it and refurbishing it, bringing it up to. Um, a, a more attractive building versus a 1960 type of building and uh, see what we can do with it. Well, thank you for your efforts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did a thank nice you. job with the Rick James building, mm -hmm. so thank, thank you, you, you very much. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay, any other questions or comments? If not, I will entertain a motion. I move we adopt resolution R-64-18. A second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the resolution passes. And now we move to resolution number R-65-18. A resolution authorizing an RPUD, Residential Planned Unit Development Concept Plan for lots 8195, 8196, and 8197. This item comes to us by way of a request received from HCF Management. They're the operators of the Garby Ridge Assisted Living Facility on Garby Road. Uh, the nature of the request is that they have 
uh, two items that they're interested in here. Uh, first off, they'd like to expand their existing facility to add a memory care unit, so it would essentially be an addition to the existing improvements found at the location. Uh, the second piece of it is uh, they own the acreage that is just to the uh, east of the existing building back towards town, I'm sorry, west towards town. And they have an, in, uh, their, their intent is to add a housing product that would provide independent living units uh, or cottages, if you will, uh, for folks that aren't quite ready for their facilities but are looking for those kind of living opportunities. Uh, this is pretty exciting in that it adds uh, to our housing stock and provides a, a product type that's not necessarily available in our community at the current moment. Uh, so uh, uh, this was received with great enthusiasm by the Planning Commission. Uh, the item was um, discussed at a public hearing before the Planning Commission. Uh, the applicant was present to speak on behalf of the item and uh, explain in greater detail, answer questions and such. Uh, in the packet, there is a uh, color rendering of their proposed site plan. Uh, you can see where the existing building footprint is located and the proposed addition would be located along with the uh, 15 structures that would each be uh, accommodate two dwelling units. Uh, so a total of 30 dwelling units that would eventually be built out. The initial phase would include just the first three structures nearest to the roadway, so six living units initially. Uh, the applicant is uh, eager to move forward with the project and uh, understands the process in terms of uh, this being a planned unit development. So they've uh, provided the submittal for the concept plan, which is what you have before you this evening. Uh, Planning Commission here again has recommended approval of this item uh, and if you so choose then that would allow them to move forward with the development plan document uh, that would ultimately um, permit them to be able to construct these improvements. Okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments from the Commission on this? I think it's a great idea. I yeah. like it. I'm I excited. I'm excited about it and I really am. Future home maybe. You never know. Well and it's definitely needed. Our demographics differently show that. So. Mm -hmm. It's a niche market. All right. Any questions or comments from the public on this resolution? If not, I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion for the resolution. Okay. It has been. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Has been moved and seconded. All those in favor of resolution number R-65-18? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The resolution passes. And now I move to resolution number R-66-18. A resolution authorizing an amendment to zoning map to change the zoning designation of lots 8195, 8196, and 8197 from R3 residential multifamily and OS open space to RPUD residential planned unit development. So this is obviously the companion item to the previous item. Uh, currently, the tracts of land hold different zoning designations as uh, referenced in the comments from the clerk. Uh, what would happen here is that it would rezone the entire tract to be the residential plan unit development designation that the applicant seeks, uh, which references the concept plan that's been submitted in the process that they're working through as we speak. Uh, so the Planning Commission, once again, has held a public hearing to consider this request. Uh, there were no objections presented, and the applicant spoke in favor of it. A planning Commission um, asked that you would approve this item. Do they actually own all this property that is going to be future developed as well? They do. So they own all the, that whole piece? They own, uh, of course, where their building is sited now, and then the acreage to the west and south uh, back up to the bike trail uh, is all property that they own. All for future development, which they're already proposing yes at some point okay mm -hmm. wow All right. any other questions or comments from the Commission on this resolution any questions or comments from the public on this resolution if not I will entertain a motion I move we adopt resolution r-66-18 I'll second has been moved and seconded all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed okay the resolution passes and now we move to the public comment portion of our meeting. Do we have any public comment this evening? If not, we will move to the city manager's report. Thank you. Just to uh, let you know, the Fox Drive water tower is now online and working. So that's a great addition to that part of the city. Uh, as a follow-up to that, we will be taking down, beginning tomorrow, the water tower uh, at the end of Spring Street. 
and then on Thursday the old water tower at the power plant so mm -hmm. there will be sections of the bike trail closed on those two days and uh, to remove those towers I think those are just one day jobs I think is the expectation uh, veteran is now working in the city again uh, for their pipeline modernization program they will be spending um, approximately nine hundred thousand dollars this year on that uh, we've asked them to do the last street that we haven't done in Shawnee, which is uh, East Main Street, and they're doing that now so that we can do paving of that entire uh, neighborhood this year. Uh, coming up, some events uh, on April the 28th, the Piqua Key Club will have a bike rodeo on Saturday the 28th, and that will take place in the lot behind the Town & Country Furniture Store. Uh, on April 21st, this coming Saturday, the Piqua Tourism Council will have a tour of the architecture of J.W. Yost, mm -hmm. who also did the Fort Piqua Plaza, and that takes place at 1030. I imagine they're meeting in front of the, in front of the library. Uh, on April 21st, the Shawnee neighborhood is having a cleanup day, mm -hmm. and then on April 28th is the Piqua Community Cleanup Day that we hope everyone will participate in from 830 to noon. So that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Lee, do you have anything? Uh, I was kind of hoping that Ruth Kuhn would have brought spring with her, but other than that, uh, I think it's coming because she showed up at the meeting tonight and she gave an excellent presentation. Uh, uh, I'm excited about that. A uh, little disappointed that uh, we couldn't get into a music video, but uh, that's coming, right? That's coming. All right. Other than that, I have nothing. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Vote? Well, I like to remind the public that they should get behind this project out on East A Street coming into town. It's a worthy project and if you just want to donate five bucks, send it to us. We'll take it. We can get all the funds we can and it's a project that we worked hard on and it's not going to be any money coming out of the city's pocket. This is all going to be donated money. Mm -hmm. So uh, get behind uh, the Friends of the Parks project out there. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Martin. Nothing tonight. Okay. Um, yeah, I, unfortunately, um, weather does happen, and we had to cancel the filming of the music video this past weekend. Um, we, the reason for that is we are all over town doing this, and the equipment that they are using outside, not just the parade scene, but we were all over town from Saturday morning to Sunday evening, um, could not be out in the weather. And as you could tell by the weather this weekend, we made the right call yeah. um, because it was pretty wet. So we are meeting this Friday with the committee that has been working on this with me, and we will get another date set hopefully in the next few weeks, and hopefully we can corral all the people we had to put this together um, in the different scenes that we have. So you will be hearing from us once we get um, our new dates set. And the other thing is a reminder that Code PICWA is going on this you week. And um, it is a wonderful way for our citizens to get involved with um, sharing your ideas and thoughts, not only about transportation plans here in our city, but also about um, code, um, our code plans here in our city. And uh, we had a wonderful session last night with citizens. And today I was there for the Lunch and Learn where we talked about transportation. And tomorrow there's a Lunch and Learn to talk about code. So if you are a citizen, if you want to be part of these, have your voice heard, I encourage you to come out and be part of um, helping to create um, our new um, transportation plans and our codes for our city. Because I have a lot of people that call me about these things. And this is a great way to have your voice be heard. So there's more information on the uh, codepiqua.com website that has the full set of times and, and um, things that are available for you to come by and share um, your ideas. So with that, um, I need a motion to adjourn to executive session. And this is to consider pending or imminent litigation. I'll make a motion to adjourn to executive session. Second. Has been moved and seconded. Can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Lee? Aye. Mayor Hines? Aye. Commissioner Martin? Aye. Commissioner Vogt? Aye. Okay, we are adjourned to executive session.